This is part three of section 4.4. So we've talked about the very basic graphs of sine and cosine. Now we're going to start transforming them. The graph of sine and cosine and their transformations, these are called sinusoidal graphs or sinusoidal curves. Just basically, you know, sine and cosine have the same basic shape going up and down, up and down in a nice smooth curve. So that's what they're called. Now, what we're going to start off with is we're going to consider the effect of multipliers on sinusoidal graphs. Okay, we're going to be talking about the same kinds of transformations that we talked about in section 1.5. And the transformations on these curves work the same way. Terminology is a little bit different. Okay, definition. Amplitude. Let f be a periodic function doesn't have to be a trig function, just needs to be periodic. Suppose capital M is the maximum value of F and lowercase m is the minimum value of F. The amplitude is defined by one half of the maximum minus the minimum. Okay, so it's gonna talk about how high up this thing goes on either side of where it starts to repeat. Now let's just talk about y equal to a times sine of x and y is equal to a cosine of x. Back in section 1.5, we learned that a multiplier in front of a function changes it vertically, a, a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. And basically the amplitude is that same idea. Is it going to flatten our graph out a little bit or is it gonna make it go up and down really fast? That's what the amplitude is talking about, okay? Now, we know that sine of x and cosine of x, the largest value that this can possibly be is a one. So the largest value we can get out of y equal to a times sine x is a times one or a. Same thing here. Minimum value, these are negative one for just the sine and the cosine. So the minimum value if we're multiplying it by a is negative a. Okay, so the functions y equal to a times sine of x and y is equal to a cosine of x have amplitude of absolute value of a and range from negative absolute value of a to positive a. The absolute value thing here, just because we're allowed for that multiplier to be a negative number, and we know that multiplying by a negative in front of a function means that we reflect it over the x-axis. Amplitude is always a positive number. And if a happens to be negative, then this is still going to give us a negative value here and a positive value here. So it makes sense. Now, I'm just gonna show these two graphs from your textbook. Right here in this blue, we have the regular y equals sine x. That's the function we've already graphed. And here we're seeing the difference between a multiplying by a three, which makes our graph go all the way up to three and then all the way down to negative three, versus one third, which means we go up to one third and down to negative one third. So this value flattens it out a little bit if your number is larger than one, then it gets a lot bigger. Okay. Basically what happens here is our Y value gets multiplied by that A. Here we have a cosine, which is the blue and they've multiplied, well, two cosine. So it goes up to two and goes down to negative two. And then this is what happens if you multiply it by a negative two instead. You get your amplitude from your positive and then you reflect it over the x-axis to deal with the negative multiplier in front. Okay, now finally, let's work an example problem. I want to graph y equal to four times cosine x over the interval negative two pi to two pi. Okay, so what do I know? I know my amplitude 
is the absolute value of this number in front here. Absolute value of four is four. So that tells me that my range is going to be from negative four to positive four. Okay. Now, if we talk about the five key points for cosine, which we talked about earlier, those five key points And this is for y equal to cosine x, not the four in front. Those points are zero, one, pi over two, zero, pi negative one, three pi over two, zero, and then two pi, um, two pi one. I was looking at the wrong line. Okay. Now we're going to multiply the y values by the amplitude. Okay? So the plots that we actually the points that we actually want to plot are 0 4 pi over 2 0 pi negative 4, 3 pi over 2, 0, and then 2 pi 4. So 0, 4, pi over 2, 0, pi negative 4, 3 pi over 2, 0, and then at 2 pi, which is this line that this graph cut off right here, we are at 4. Now we want to use even symmetry to get the rest of our points. So I also have here. Now connect these with a smooth curve. You definitely don't want to make these giant pointed things. And we have a graph that looks something like that. It is the graph of cosine x, but stretched up and down by a factor of four. Now let's graph y equal to negative two sine x. Here are my amplitude is the absolute value of negative 2. So that is simply 2. Okay. Now since this is a negative number, I know I'm going to need to reflect it about the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly sketch y equal to 2 times sine of x. So I'm going to sketch it with a positive value, and then I'll reflect it at the end. So if I'm going to do this, my key points for sine x without the multiplier, those points are 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and then 2 pi 0. Let's multiply the y-coordinate of each of these by our amplitude, which is 2. So the points I would plot for y equal to positive 2 sine x, 0, 0, pi over 2, 2, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 2, and then 2 pi 0. So if I plot these, these points, have pi over 2, 2, that's 0, 
3 pi over 2 is at negative 2, and then right here. So that little graph for positive 2 in front, this would look something like this. Okay. Now since we're supposed to reflect it over the x-axis, go ahead and do that for all of these points. This one's down here now. So this part will look something like this. We know we have an odd function, so this should be reflected across the origin. So that means I will have these points as well. And we have another cycle of that sine function drawn. 